So this morning we are going to explain what was that uh, Google Sum of Code uh, project that we had uh, and uh, showcase uh, uh, the work of the students. Uh, and we are lucky to have most of the mentors, the best ones, that are with us today. So Google Sum of Code uh, is a project that started 10, 11 years ago now by Google that says, that, well, during the summer, students need to work and get some money. Instead of having them flipping, flipping burgers, uh, let's pay them to work on open source projects. And so every year you can apply as an open source organization. Say, okay, if you have students, I will take them and we'll have mentor and for three months uh, they are going to work on some project. And that's the third time uh, CVCRM has been accepted. The first time we had only four students. Uh, this year we, had, we started with ten. And uh, it's really interesting, you should, if you know students uh, or if you are still in touch with universities, you should mention them that they should apply either for CVCRM or any other open source project. And uh, if uh, you have a need, and that's not super high, but it can be done by a student in a few months during the summer, please do come and step forward. We are looking for mentors uh, every year and hopefully next year that's going to happen again. So we started with 10 uh, projects, uh, two of them uh, dropped uh, at midterm, mostly because they got jobs. And uh, so we had to uh, close on two of these uh, 10 projects. And we are left with eight that are really good. Maybe we start with the first one from Aileen. Yes. As a guest star, uh, she has another session. Well. Yeah, I'll talk to my yeah, I'll talk to my just the mic up a bit as well. Um, yeah, okay, so I'll just briefly tell you what my student did. My student is about the summer. What am I doing wrong? Uh, no, just it's another video. Oh, just just oh okay. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> it's complicated. I don't do technology. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I had a guy called Sarah, but he actually approached me in around about November and started kind of working with me quite a long time prior to the Google Summer of Code. And he got a number of patches into Core, which is great. And um, I was able to get him early into the concept of unit tests. Um, he did a project on importing into CiviCRM. He took an extension idea that I already had, which is to import from import to any API. Um, and there's an extension I've got called the CSV importer. He kind of did a new version of that using more modern technology, so Angular, um, Composer packages, and it imports from Google Spreadsheets as well as traditional CSV and things. Um, and he did some nice stuff. He, he wrote a validate action for the API to support that, which was something that um, I actually sat through. Someone gave basically an hour presentation on why the API needed such things. Um, so it was cool to see that just a, a Google Summer of Code student would, rather than sit there and whinge, actually just kind of create it and be done with it. So it was a really cool little project, and he's now got a job as an intern with Google. So. Uh, in terms of keeping him in the community, Google stole him. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all I have to say about it, really. And that's an extension that is already in uh... Yeah, I would say it's a little... There's still some little tweaks around it to really use it, but it is available on his GitHub. Um, I think, yeah. So it's certainly... I mean, I think really it's a pretty cool thing to be able to import your option values from a Google spreadsheet or something like that, you know, because not everyone's got CSVs. Um, and the library is something that's kind of an open source expandable thing, so it could support all sorts of other formats over and above those formats, CSV and Google. That's me. Yep. Um, 
I was a mentor with uh, Brian. Um, we did co-mentoring a student from India and Brian is from the States and the student was from India so that's quite interesting to mentor so over all of the globe. Um, <coughs> our student uh, was working on an extension for reporting and the reporting was uh, built around pivot tables um, and um, the, the start of the student was of course um, or the start of the project the student had some family issues so he didn't delegate much time so which was hard for us to discover that he had family issues why he wasn't working that hard but after we discovered that he was really putting an effort into the project which we are really glad of um, um, uh, and we let our student first um, explore areas of how to do pivot reporting, um, what kind of JavaScript or uh, what kind of PHP could you use for that. Um, he also had to learn CVCRM, he never used CVCRM, he has never been across CVCRM. So that is one thing he had to learn. Um, I didn't think of that, that someone had to learn CVCRM, but obviously you need to. <laughs> um, so personally I felt really that um, that was really hard for me as a mentor. Oh yeah, he has to learn CVCRM, he doesn't have any training on how to write an extension and stuff like that. So, um, But in the end he got a really nice extension with pivot to tables. Um, um, and uh, what also happened at the end of, because he got this extension on GitHub, uh, there were a few people who reported issues on the extension. So it seems like people were involved with this extension or trying to use it. Um, and uh, our student has also to learn uh, how to deal when someone reports an issue. What are you going to do? Because it's your project, you feel responsible for it. Um, you feel like that you have to fix those issues. But in open source you don't really have to. It's nice if you do, but um, so I do think our student has learned a lot during the summer. So um, it was really great to mentor him and uh, uh, I will probably be a mentor next year again. So that's it. And oh yeah, if, if you want to see the extension, uh, our student wrote a blog post about the extension, about this uh, project. So look up the blog post on the CVCRM website and there you will find the link to the extension. So. That's behind you. It's behind you. Oh, it's behind me. Oh, uh, <laughs> great. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm Matt, I work for CompuCorp. Um, I showed off uh, CV Mobile very quickly in about three minutes yesterday. Um, hopefully I have a bit more time today. Um, I worked with uh, a, a first year student, um, Adam uh, Hillier from uh, Cambridge University. And he, um, he was in a very similar situation actually to uh, what the other mentors have expressed where uh, A, he didn't know anything about CV. Um, you know, none of the, the usual workflows that we're all uh, used to from creating a contact, uh, adding relationships and the, the kind of mechanisms that fall out from that, he had absolutely no idea about at the start. Um, he'd worked with Angular version 1 um, and built uh, CV Mobile on Angular version 2. Um, so again, uh, a bit more learning for him to do. Uh, but the, I think his most major challenge was that the the timing for uh, Google Summer of Code against his university exams meant that he only had about half of the uh, half of the period to actually produce anything. So we spent uh, we spent the first half doing uh, a lot of planning, a lot of light uh, touches here and there, um, lighter communications with him, um, and then in the second half really uh, hit the code and and uh, started producing stuff. Um, so it was really positive actually that he he's produced what is um, a very complete uh, product in that uh, we, we aren't seeing any bugs with it. You know, we've been through all of the iterations and things to get it to a stage where it's stable and that um, people can go out and install it uh, as you would a normal extension um, and then just uh, do a little bit of configuration to choose uh, uh, the profiles that you want to use for contacts or um, for memberships, etc. Um, and, uh, and then just go on from there. 
<clears throat> so just to, uh, just to show you around it quickly, um, we've got the contacts, and I showed you uh, this screen earlier. So you can search, uh, and it will dynamically uh, pull up results. Let's go with, uh, there you go. So um, that's that coming up. Um, you can do it based on uh, the contact names, the emails, or um, somebody's phone number. Um, I haven't actually put in a contact where I know the phone number, so I can't actually show you that, but uh, just trust me, it works. Um, you can also add a, uh, add a contact from in here. Um, and the fields, that you, uh, the fields that you choose from this are actually based off a profile. Uh, so in, um, in the back end of Civi, you actually say, right, for Civi Mobile and individuals, I want to use this profile. And you can build that profile however you want, uh, and it will just uh, it will pull through here. Uh, that's the same for organisations and and uh, and households. Um, the postcode functionality or the, the proximity search functionality is actually something that was in um, the first versions of Civi Mobile, uh, and is something that we wanted to keep. We wanted to retain all of the functionality that was already there in Civi Mobile, um, but Adams. One of Adam's tasks was to move it from jQuery Mobile, um, quite a, a, effectively an older um, bit of tech, uh, to um, Angular, um, which is much more modern. So all of this is uh, is responsive, and it will work on different uh, different screen sizes. Um, but it, yeah, it was important for us that he retained everything that um, the Web Access Global had had worked on um, on previously. Um, so then. We started integrating other bits and pieces for it. Uh, I showed you yesterday, actually, when you have an event and you're looking at the participants for an event, if it is somebody who is a pending pay later, that you get this pop-up. And it's just it's little pieces of validation like this that we were looking to inject into the project and make sure that whoever's using it for that specific purpose, in this case, you're actually standing on the door of an event and checking people in, that you've got all of the functions that you need to be able to do that. So in, with, uh, with this, your, uh, your person comes in and they, they check in, you realize you get this pop-up so to say that, oh, they were a registered pay later, they said they were going to pay on the door, um, so now you can send them over to, um, to the right people and check them in. This, only, um, this bit of functionality actually only supports creating the contribution. The, we didn't go as far as to, to integrate payments. I thought that was a little bit harsh to throw at a, um, a first year student who was coming along for a summer of code project. Um, so we, uh, we went with just the, uh, the contribution <coughs> side of it, uh, expecting that people running events would have that capacity um, elsewhere. You're also able to uh, have a look at a contact and bring back their membership. Uh, so this, this membership screen, again, it's, uh, it's searchable. Um, and when you look at a, uh, a contact, you get the, the membership payments underneath it. Uh, and you can go ahead and record another um, contribution underneath it. And then lastly is just the, uh, the donations function. So again, this isn't actually taking the payment for the donation. This is just recording the, the contribution within Civi. Um, but you can go in, click on a contact, and quickly record a, uh, a contribution against them. So that's, <clears throat> that's Civi Mobile in five minutes rather than three minutes. Um, yeah, go ahead. Um, when you know you can call and email people straight from the Yes. Does that create an activity against their record? Uh, yeah, so when you, uh, when you go out and you email people through this, uh, actually, no, I don't think it does, sorry. Sorry, that's um, because, it, because you, are, um, you are taking people out of, uh, or your, your actions are going from Civi Mobile out into your phone uh, to your native uh, email um, or to your, uh, to your phone function. Yeah. Um, so it, it kind of moves uh, uh, away, from, away from Civi at that point. It would be a brilliant thing for my director who just won't use Civi <laughs> so nice if it then I can see when he's emailed someone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one, one thing to note about all of these projects, I suppose, is that they, um, you know, we have a limited time with these guys. Uh, and what we really want to do is to, to build something which then forms uh, a kind of base that we can launch from. Um, so Adam's built all of this uh, with Angular and, and uh, calling the APIs. Um, and so, it's not, it's not like we have to rewrite the stuff that he's already done. If we want to add bits of functionality, we can. Oh, okay. That's um, really brilliant. Yeah.
I'd like to think so. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of Civi Mobile. And so yeah, obviously one goal is having a student doing something useful as clearly your student did. That as well get them on board and hopefully that they stay part of the community and contribute later. And uh, the next project is one, another uh, mobile, but that's an app, an Android app. And that was a student last year that did a basic app where you can integrate your address book and uh, on your mobile and uh, CVCRM. And you can do like record the call, you dial, and then you can record the call. <coughs> and uh, he was a student last year, and this year I came back as a mentor. And he had a new student that added more features, and now you have the reporting that you can have, so all of the CV reports you can use and get from uh, your app. And that's a really nice project as well, worthwhile mm -hmm. checking in. Okay, cool. So, should we hand over to Eric? Yep. Do you want to come over? Yeah, I have the other one as well. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, after being uh, uh, blackmailed by Xavier a number of years to become a mentor for Google Summer of Code, he was successful this year. I don't know what trick you used, but he was successful. Um, for me, it was, uh, uh, apart from the code, it was really interesting to mentor a student who's uh, a couple of thousand miles away from you. Um, I had a student from Cameroon, um, and it was quite interesting also to m mentor knowing that you're in different frameworks of the world so it's it you, you get close to someone and it's interesting to see how it relates so it was a very rewarding experience it's a lot of work because as uh, both Matt and Jaap said you uh, immediately find out that a lot of the things that she in my case didn't know uh, I wasn't aware of so um, doesn't, doesn't know CVCRM, no idea how it works, no idea of what a CRM does. So it, it, it's quite a, 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 an interesting one to uh, get to. Uh, the project we did uh, was actually uh, um, an idea which has been floating around for quite some time and was discussed at Civicon last year as a birds of a feather session. And uh, it, initiated, uh, uh, it was initiated by my co-mentor Ilya, who's uh, sitting over there. And he has this uh, a, a wonderful service called Sapir. Do you know what Sapir is or does? It's a way to link applications. Mm -hmm. So it basically means that if you, for instance, uh, use SurveyMonkey, and SurveyMonkey is hooked up to Sapir, and then you want to send a mail after that using Google Mail, then you can just use Sapir to link the two together, if you like. And conceptually, it is really interesting for a lot of uh, NGOs as well, uh, Ilya thought, because it would be really useful if you could use it to hook up CiviCRM to all the possible applications that are in Zapier. Um, but that's just a concept. So we thought it would be interesting, but we had no idea what would be involved in trying to get it to work. Um, and Last year we discussed it as a birds of a feather and there were some parties interested but no one was interested enough to put any budget against it. So when um, <coughs> Xavier successfully blackmailed me I thought, ha, ah, I know a project. So what my student did was not create a, she did create an extension but that was not the objective. The objective was to do a proof of concept and document what she had to do to uh, uh, have a contribution in CVCRM, and if it's over a certain amount, she used CV rules as well, then automatically send out a survey with SurveyMonkey, which she did. She managed to get there in the end, and she created a whole uh, uh, wiki page on all the steps she went through and everything she did during that process. So it was really worthwhile to see it works, there was quite some, uh, uh, it was quite straightforward, straightforward, although there are some interesting concepts in there, like authorization, how does it work with CVCRM, um, but also where does the data go, do I know where the data goes, 
do I have, if I hand over stuff to Zapier, it, 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 does the data go through the US or that sort of stuff. So there were some concepts that she touched upon, some that she didn't. But in the big, uh, big picture, you can sort of see there what's happening. So you'd be in CVCRM and uh, there would be a trigger somewhere using CV rules. Uh, and there would be a webhook to Zapier, which is, Zapier has two ways of uh, linking, the old fashioned way uh, uh, and the latest technology way, and she followed the latest technology way, which is using a webhook, which then sort of uh, uh, agrees a, a trusted session with Zapier. And uh, she got um, Gmail sent, SurveyMonkey and SurveyPal attached. So it was quite a good uh, little project. Um, she also told me that her ambition is to be the first uh, partner, CVCRM partner in Cameroon. So I'm hoping to stay in touch and keep her in the community. That was my experience. Awesome. And that's, yeah, coming back down. It was probably difficult for you to hook up with the community and where to get help and where to ask questions. And that's even worse for students because they are there to develop. So the, it's yeah, harder than just using the, the, the software by itself. <coughs> and that was, I mean, they are students and they are not used to ask. When you're a student, you work on your own and you're not, if you ask, you're cheating and explaining, well, open source, that's not how it works. Real work, well, that's not how it works either. But saying, yeah, you, you should ask. If you don't know, ask. And uh, uh, finding the balance for the mentors and students saying, OK, now you're on your own and try to dig a bit more versus, OK, you completely lost. Come back to me and ask help, either directly to the mentor or the community at large. And another difficulty is to explain them how useful it is. Because for them, yeah, that's a summer job, and that's better than working at McDonald's. But mm, explain them, well, that's maybe 10,000 NGOs that m might end up using it. Uh, and there are things that, well, some of them you might like. Uh, like the first year, we had uh, a project with the Electronic Frontier Foundation. And the student was a big fan of their work. Uh, and uh, he was super proud, saying, well, actually, I did something useful for an NGO that I like. Uh, and uh, my experience is now over three years, the students that stay part of the community, that's when the end users are able to give the feedback, either through bug reports or just saying, oh, that's really interesting, or commenting on the blog post and saying, well, what you do as a student is not something like a summer job. It's some, something that we will use and that will support the work of the NGO that hopefully you like. And uh, so that's a big part of the community to try to welcome them and explain them that what they do is useful. And uh, when, when, when the students get that, they're really happy and proud and say, oh, I did something that's useful and tend to stick. Um, another nice project uh, that started last year uh, that's integrating CVCRM and social media so you can log in from uh, Facebook. Um, so that was uh, uh, done last year by a student. And uh, this year it was continued by another one and uh, improved it. Uh, we are going to put back uh, in uh, the page uh, on the London uh, and put the links of all uh, the, the project so you can download them and try on your own. So just two days, that's to give you a taste of what's there. And so one of the features that was added is to link automatically an event in CVCRM and an event in Facebook. And this one is worthwhile checking as well. <laughs> okay, again, we are going to put the, the links on, on the page so you can check them. Uh, what other do we have? Uh, sync framework. Did we do that? Yeah, that was Aileen. Responsive email. Yeah, responsive uh, email li layout. So if you send a thank you after a contribution, if you send a confirmation when you register to an event, the layout by default is mm -hmm. <laughs> could be better. <laughs> 
And so the project was uh, to make it better. And that's an extension that's using a responsive framework to make nicer layout for these emails and integrate them within the existing templates for everything transactional sent by, uh, by CVCRM. So every email to acknowledge um, the donation, to acknowledge a membership, to acknowledge um, an event registration. It's easier to change the layout put your logo and it looks nicer and it works nicer on mobiles as well. So that's an extension you can install and customize a bit uh, and works quite well. And that does... It's called... Uh, transaction Templates. Yeah, and I was the mentor of that uh, student, and that's difficult, uh, the commenter. That's, that was difficult with the students that don't have any experience of open source to say, okay, now we need to plan a bit and maybe look at different frameworks that exist for the emails, uh, for the templates. Uh, and the students had the tendency to dig directly, oh, I found one, let's try. But no, maybe that was while <laughs> spending a few more hours checking the others. And, uh, so that's yeah, interesting, the relationship as well as a mentor to push them or hold them. And that's really, you should try it, that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you, yeah. Which one did we miss? Uh, And this one I really liked as well because that was uh, the, the mentor uh, was a student two years ago. He was a student last year and this year he came to mentor that, uh, that project and he's still active in the community uh, and he's still helping maintaining the extension he wrote uh, two years ago. And so that's two goals of that uh, project. Uh, Google Summer of Code, both having nice results and new extensions or something, new features in the core, but as well having fresh blood and a new partner in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. and, uh, oh, and, yeah. <laughs> and the mentor, and that's nice to see that students from last year came back uh, as, uh, as mentors and to see them growing and following what we do and being part of the community. And the last one was um, a synchronization framework. And so we, you regularly need to synchronize CVCRM contacts with something else, like uh, Google, um, Gmail, address book, and so on. And they worked uh, on having a framework uh, so that's easy to synchronize with your own organization address book or your accounting or in that case it was a Google, um, the address book of Google. Do you have it? That's, uh, it's coming. Again, we are going to put the link to all these uh, so you can explore them on your own and install and see how it works for you. And did a nice web pa page to present the project. Mm. Um, and so, and the two others that dropped, uh, you had one of the students that... Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, we, we met two students at, at CompuCorp. One of them uh, obviously being at Sydney Mobile. Um, one, the other uh, was uh, we were looking to try and beef up uh, Civi Booking um, because for a lot of people um, that are using Civi Booking at the moment, we get uh, we get requests that come in um, around uh, developing the, the the available slots and things that you can have for, uh, for your bookings, as well as uh, and this was the biggest one that we tried, wanted to try and get was to, uh, to have it as a front-end uh, or have a front-end component to it so that people could come along and actually apply for a booking and that would come, that would ship with Civi Booking, that, that functionality. Um, 
and uh, he he did pretty well, um, but uh, he was one of the two students who uh, who actually found work uh, halfway through the project. Um, and so he, he finished up his documentation and things for us and, and uh, passed that on to us, but then, um, but then uh, uh, unfortunately went his, his own way. Um, so yeah, a little, a little disappointing that we didn't, we didn't get to, uh, to see that all the way through. He was quite a promising student, um, very, very ambitious. Uh, we had to keep kind of pulling him back rather than, uh, rather than pushing him forward. Um, with Adam, I think he, he was very much kind of in his shell and we had to coax him out a little bit um, you know get him to understand that like Xavier said the community and asking the community doesn't isn't cheating you know it's, a, it's everybody within uh, within the civic community is very happy to help each other and that that community is what what we really wanted to instill um, within our students um, I don't know about the other one do you who was the other one? Um, which one have we missed well, there was one other project that, uh, that didn't pass. And Matt, is there a demo for the front ends? For no, which no, one? He didn't get as far as actually putting together enough code for it to be a, a stable release, so um, we've got the, the documentation and things and bits and pieces like that, but it's not... It's not a so if you find a client who will actually execute for the getting it done, maybe we'll try this here. Yeah. Or if any developers are just really, really curious and bored, <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> yeah. I have a question about CV booking because I don't know about it. Is it just for rooms or can you do it for things? Uh, you can you can do it for things. I do actually. I have a session straight after this about CV booking. <laughs> um, so rather than give it's it all the way things, now, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's about things. <laughs> does, any, does anyone have any other questions for any of the projects uh, that we've shown or um, Google Summer of Code in general? Or how to become a member mentor? That's a very good question. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Who wants to be a mentor next year? I get a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> any others? Any takers? Anyone interested? Oh, seriously, <laughs> the, the project that are the project that are really successful are projects when you have a good mentor that knows the tech part, but as well when you have real users. And having feedback from real users, it's both motivating for the students saying, oh, that's something for real useful. And that's really useful for the project because that's part of what they need to learn as uh, students and IT professionals or future ones. So, okay, you have requirements and then you try to understand the requirement and the way you are going to present your problem is not something that we can directly translate in, into code. So all that process is really useful and the projects that are successful tend to have an organization that is involved both to help shaping the project because it starts with an ID in May and then the students come in and we discuss, uh, okay, actually maybe the scope is too wide or too narrow or doesn't make sense or not, not going to be achievable over the summer. So all that part of framing and make from some kind of abstract project ID into something that they can work over the summer is something that's really important for the success of the project, for having good results and having end users or organizations that come with their own real need is really useful because most of the things, well, if you don't know how that's going to be used, that's hard to make something useful. And uh, again, even if you don't know how to code, even if you don't have the tech skills to help them, okay, put that bit here and change that. Just having to motivate them, to follow them, to explain what you need, uh, to test uh, and to motivate them, saying, oh, that's useful, it's really, really important, and the, the successful projects tend to have both the tech but the end user part. So let's ask again, who's mentoring next year? <laughs> 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 ah. 
and uh, we are going to probably by the end of the year start again a page uh, and where you can just drop IDs and put your name saying yeah, if we do that project I'd be willing to help and if you have needs uh, and you feel that something that a student that doesn't know CVCRM knows a bit of coding could do in a few months uh, that'd be really useful because that's how you attract good, good students because you have good projects uh, and uh, so this year we had like 20-25 uh, uh, projects uh, and out of these uh, we found 10 students that were good. Unfortunately two had to drop uh, but having a lot of good projects is a nice way of attracting motivated and good uh, students uh, and for you might be something that you get out of it and uh, a new tool, a new feature, a new something. I'll keep your name. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find you. <laughs> I mean, it, it, even even if you're not, sorry, even if you're uh, you're in a position where you can't be a mentor, you can still submit the ideas. Um, you know, it's really important that we've got all of the ideas there that we can, you know, start getting, uh, start attracting students in and getting them involved. Um, the more ideas we have, you know, the, the we can start picking the ones that are. Um, the, the highest quality off the top and, uh, and yeah, really, really push uh, CV forward with it. I think uh, Ilya is nodding here, but he's a good example where he had an idea and he put his name against it, he put his name as a co-mentor and having the name of Amnesty attached helps to attract students, so we'll find it interesting to do something for a real world example, even if after that Ilya did view the page three times <laughs> in the month and that not a lot. <laughs> But, but the combination is powerful. That was a real thing because we, what happened to us is that there was a there was one of the projects which in the end might not have got done, but unfortunately, but um, that was oversubscribed. So this was to do something with social media, um, and all the students wanted to do the, the social media, you know, project. Um, and then when it was decided that somebody had that, um, you know, trying to find another project which was to the students' interest was actually quite difficult. So you know, we're kind of sat saying, okay, well, what about this, what about this, what about this, and it would be much better. There was, there was a good list there, but trying to find things that really fit for the students was, was actually quite difficult. So the more ideas that are there, the more things that are likely to, you know, to, to be a good fit. Mm -hmm. Where do we send those, or who do we send them to? There is a wiki page, and you just add your name and the project. And either you mentioned I'd be interested to mentor, or you just put that's an ID, and the students will come and check, and we can exchange. Or maybe that's really too broad, and maybe it needs to be split in two. And so we'll set that up by the end of the year and start brainstorming. Pick pick the project that were not taken uh, this year, and hopefully get new ones uh, and new names and new mentors. Yeah, and as mentioned before, I was, um, I was co-mentoring with Brian uh, from the States. Um, my experience is that uh, we were both a mentor. Uh, really helps as well because it costs a lot of time to be a mentor. Uh, I don't know if it's you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, does, it, does, it doesn't it does. cost any time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, um, I, I really uh, found it helpful to have uh, to be a mentor with two of us. Uh, one of us couldn't, because we had a weekly Skype call with a student, if one of us couldn't make it, then the other one could make it. So we made sure this, the project kept on. And if one of us was saying in the Skype call, well, you you should really, you know, um, being a kind of bad cop, good cop in a Skype call, <laughs> uh, uh, the one was saying that the, the, the confronting the student, the other one was uh, comforting the student. So, um, 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 so that, that really works out quite well. So you don't have to be a mentor at your own, that's what I want to say. You can, you can find someone where you can go mentor with. Yeah, this year pretty much all the projects had two, mentor, two mentors. Uh, sometimes it was two mostly tech background and sometimes that was like end user and uh, more tech. And yeah, having two is useful. So even again, you're not sure you have enough time to spend a day per week, but a few hours is always useful, motivating for the students. And during the summer, 
we tend to have some holidays as well, so having a backup is useful. And put your name in the wiki. <laughs> Last round, who's coming for the <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you have something? No. Any, Any questions? questions? Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>